final mic test. Can everybody hear me? Back in the oh, good. All right, cool. All right, so I'm gonna start here. Um, we're gonna be trying to demystify machine learning today, and I know this is kind of like an awkward position, uh, but uh, I think I'm gonna. I might take this mic because it's kind of weird to uh, kneel like that. All right, cool. So we're trying to demystify machine learning. <coughs> I'm going to wait for these folks to sit and, um, all right. All right, cool. So start. Um, machine learning is one of those words that's been really hyped up recently. And um, you can usually hear it in tandem with AI, data mining, blockchain, data analysis. And when something is so hyped up, it's really hard to distinguish signal from noise. And uh, my hope today is that we'll be able to demystify machine learning and make it easier to understand. Whenever I kind of learn new technology, I try to answer a few questions, and that's kind of how this talk is going to be structured. And the first one is, what is the thing that I'm doing? And what is machine learning? So machine learning is one of those, um, again, it's a term that's been really hyped up. Uh, but plainly put, it's really stat, statistics, and math uh, being used to learn about data and predict things based on that data. That's, that's kind of like all that it is. And uh, um, the next thing usually I like to um, figure out when I'm learning a new piece of new technology is where is it being used right now? Uh, because you know if I can't see it being used, it's kind of hard to visualize it. So the first use case uh, that's being kind of that's the most popular one is recommendation engines. So if you ever bought a book off Amazon, um, when you finish the purchasing process, it would, it would tell you, hey, you might also like these books. And then it would give you a list. Like, for example, I bought a programming book and it gave me a bunch of programming books. But the way that Amazon compiled that list was with a machine learning algorithm. And it looked at your purchasing history. It looked at your browsing history. It looked at um, your social media um, and kind of compile the list for you. The same thing happens with Netflix and YouTube. So if you watch a video, it recommends a bunch of other videos that are similar to that one. Um, it's a, it's, it might not be the same algorithm, but it's a, it's a similar concept. So, so you can see this all around the web pretty much. Um, the next one that's really cool is OCR. It's a, the only picture of a check that I can find that I can use for free. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty bad one. Uh, but um, if you ever took a picture of your check, um, and um, that money got deposited to your bank account with your bank app. The way that works, there's probably a neural network somewhere, um, or, or also known as a machine learning algorithm, that um, reads the money, reads the number from the um, from the image, and deposits that um, money to your bank account. OCR stands for optical character recognition. Um, the next one that's pretty mind blowing if you think about it is cancer research. Um, it's really cool. Uh, it, there's been a lot of research done. Uh, how can machine learning help with cancer? And the latest thing I read about it was they had newborn babies, they took their DNA, and then they used machine learning to see how likely are they going to have a certain type of cancer, which if you think about it, that's pretty mind blowing. The next one that's really hot right now is self-driving cars. Pretty hip, hip picture of Tesla in California, uh, but um, in the heart of a self-driving car is a machine learning algorithm. That's how a car knows, should I go left, should I go right? Um, how far should I go? What is a car? What is a road? Uh, pretty much anything. It's a blank slate, right? When, when an algorithm starts and then it figures everything else from its own. So now we know use cases and what it is. The next question is when to use it. So I'm, I'm gonna admit, um, a fun f a thing here that this is probably one of my next talks and uh, this topic of when to use it it can be a separate thing on its own I'm gonna touch up on a few brief on a few um, notes here so everybody well uh, probably everyone heard SQL and SQL is a is an amazing tool and um, it's great it's been around for years um, it's very reliable um, it works as a charm and uh, Whenever you need to answer a question like, how many orders did I have last week? Or who's um, our highest paying customer? Or um, how many people churned from our product last week? Um, any questions that are similar to that? Any, 
any, anything that you have to do with historical analysis, pretty much, um, you can use SQL for. Um, it's amazing at that, and um, it's a great tool. The next uh, thing is when we want to predict the future. Um, if you want to answer to your question, um, for example, uh, how many clients are we going to have next week? Or how likely uh, are we going to um, close this customer, this big sales pipeline that we have? Or um, what's the salary of my, um, what should the salary be of my next employee? So anyth anything that has to predict the future in, in a certain way, uh, that's a really good fit and use case for, um, for machine learning. Cool. Now we know um, when to use it, how to use it, not how yet, uh, we know when to use it. Um, let's talk about math a little bit. And this is going to be a, a hope with this part of the talk is for you guys to see um, and bridge the gap between math and machine learning because there was a gap when I was learning it and it took a little bit to click for me. But uh, let's, let's look at a fairly simple equation, right? So we have um, theta zero plus theta one x one, which um, is what we have on the right, and on the left we have something called h of theta. Um, it's a you know when we have theta zero theta one x one, we can calculate the thing on the left, right? So now let's look at this equation. Um, we replace the thetas with numbers, and now we have an even simpler equation where the only unknown is x one, and once we have x one we can um, we can have all the pieces necessary to uh, to calculate the uh, the h of theta. So what's cool about this specific equation? Uh, don't mind the numbers, uh, but um, what's cool about this form of an equation? It's that it's in that it's a backbone of an algorithm called linear regression. And uh, we're going to talk about linear regression later. But just to kind of give you an idea of how this works, is what a linear regression al <coughs> just to give you an idea of how this works. Let's pretend we're trying to uh, predict a salary, for example. And uh, the only thing that matters for the salary is how much experience someone has. In real life, salary is determined by many things, but in our talk is gonna be determined by someone's experience. And what a linear regression algorithm would do is it would figure out thetas through some process, which we're gonna talk about later. And then once it has the thetas, it would take the experience, for example, we're trying to predict the salary of somebody who has one year of experience. Uh, it would uh, put in one instead of x1, and then the equation would be three plus 0 0.2 times one, which is three times two, and that's how much someone's salary would be. And that's pretty much it. That's, I mean, given that's a fairly simple form of linear regression, but that's kind of how it works, and that's kind of how um, an algorithm does things. Um, it, I remember when I was learning, this all seemed like magic, but once I was able to actually do it by hand um, and go through this process, it all made sense. So um, whenever you see an algorithm, um, machine learning algorithm, try to, um, if you really want to understand it, try to understand the math behind it. And uh, that will kind of give you a, an idea. And I was super scared when I was learning math. <laughs> because I haven't done it since high school and college, uh, but um, you know, just don't give up. And um, I think that that's when um, that's where it really clicks. All right, and hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of how math works with uh, machine learning and where does it fit. Cool. So now that we talked about math, let's talk about types of machine learning algorithms. There, there's two big groups. Uh, there's something called supervised machine learning. Um, which is basically when um, machine learning engineer or data scientist goes in and guides the algorithm and tells it what's wrong and what's right. Uh, what I mean by guide is there's this thing called labeling. So imagine we have three pictures. Uh, the first picture is a picture of a car. The second picture is a picture of a plant. And the third picture is a um, picture of a human. And we would feed those pictures into an algorithm. And the way an algorithm would know what a car is, it would look at a picture, it would look at its label, and which we would put, so we, before we would feed it, we would say, okay, the picture of a car, we would write a label on it that says a car, and we would do the same for other pictures. We would feed that into an algorithm, and an algorithm would pick up the picture, and it would pick up the label, and it would match those two, and that's how it would know what is a car. There's another group called unsupervised machine learning or non-supervised machine learning. Um, that one is the complete opposite, meaning there's no labeling. 
and an algorithm figures out everything on its own. It's a little bit more complicated, um, but it exists, and it's pretty amazing. And there's um, arguably the third group called semi-supervised machine learning, which is in between those things. Um, and it kind of sits in between, it has both labeled data and non-labeled data. And we're finally come to the fun part of this talk, which is linear regression. <laughs> I mentioned it a few times here. And uh, I'm gonna, in the next few slides, I'm gonna have math again, yay. Um, <laughs> we already saw this equation. It turns out it's, again, a backbone of linear regression. Um, again, a simple version, but still a backbone. Um, we have a thing called, can you guys see the words? In red? All right, cool. Um, H of theta is called dependent variable. And don't, again, we can call these uh, with whatever letters we want to call them with. I mean, this is just a convention I'm used to, but you can call it how you want. It's usually either Y or H, uh, but whatever you know, floats your boat. So dependent variable is a thing we're trying to predict. Uh, we're going to keep using the salary example. So we're trying to predict someone's salary. So H of theta would be their salary. Um, there's a constant called theta zero, which is a constant, and then there's x1, which is called an independent variable or a feature. Um, in our salary example, that would be experience. And then there's this interesting thing called theta one, which is coefficient. Um, and it's interesting because it represents how well a relationship do we have between x1 and h of theta. So for example, if somebody's driving a red car, um, the coefficient would be pretty low because the color of somebody's car doesn't really matter uh, and doesn't influence their salary as much. But their experience, on the other hand, does mean a lot, so a coefficient will be pretty high up. And that's what a coefficient is. And now let's look at this equation again. So I didn't really explain the process of how do we get to those datas, and that's kind of where the magic happens. <laughs> um, and uh, because, the, you know, this is how it looks like in production. So when you deploy a machine learning model uh, behind the scenes, it has this formula and it knows how to calculate it, right? So in order to figure out how do we get the thetas, we have to plot this on a graph. And hopefully you can see this graph. I tried, this is made from scratch by me. <laughs> uh, but uh, we have a few elements going on. So we have X1, um, I wish I had a laser. We have X1, uh, which is, uh, which is on x-axis, and it represents our um, experience. And then we have h of theta on y-axis, which represents someone's salary. And then we have this line, uh, which is basically um, drawn by thetas. So theta zero would be, I've got to walk over here a little bit, but theta zero would be an intercept on the y-axis, and then the slope of the line would be kind of directed with uh, theta one. And then there's a bunch of these red dots. Uh, these red dots are, um, are real data points. So we would go in, we're trying to figure out someone's salary, and we're trying to make this machine learning thing work. We would go in, we'd make a SQL query, and it would pull out the latest 50 people that were employed by us, and we would plot it on a graph based on their experience uh, and salary. So if you think about it, if you have this black line, it's fairly easy to determine how big someone's salary is. So for example, let's say somebody has uh, five years of experience, which is kind of here, you would draw a line up and then you would read it from the y-axis. So you would say, I don't know, it's $50,000, for example. Cool, so the question really becomes when you look at this graph is, how do you find the, this line? Like, how do you figure out where it is? And um, there's a few things, th there's a few ways of doing it, um, but intuitively what happens without going deeper into math, is an algorithm goes in and draws a bunch of these lines. Like it goes here, draws a line, it draws a line, it draws a line, it draws a line, and then it picks the one that best fits these red dots. Um, the way we define best fits is um, it picks a line where the difference between the actual data point um, and the predicted data point is the smallest because that means that we're the most accurate. Um, that's kind of intuitive how it happens. When I made the first version of this talk, I had a bunch of math explaining it, and it went um, over people's heads um, because it was just too detailed for the time frame. So that's intuitive how it happens. I'm more than welcome uh, to talk about after the talk, uh, but um, because there's a there's a bunch of things that happen behind the scenes um, and things that you have to consider, uh, but on a higher level, intuitively, that's how it works. 
Um, so feel free to ask me be, uh, after the talk. So now that we know this, um, I inserted this slide a few days ago because I realized it, it's a good thing to know. Whenever you're trying to solve a machine learning problem, there's a few steps that you have to take, and you can generally bucket them in three uh, big uh, buckets. The first one is data gathering, and you have to gather data from all the sources that you can. That's, for example, your database, your logs, CSV files. Then you have to pick the algorithm. Well, you first you have to clean the data and see how the data looks like once you have it, and then you have to pick the algorithm, and then you have to implement the algorithm. Um, now, in big companies, these buckets are separate. Uh, data gathering is usually by data engineering, and then you have subsets of data engineering. Picking the algorithm and implementing the algorithm can be data scientists and machine learning engineers. Um, in a smaller company, it's usually um, one person doing all this. Uh, but what's interesting about Python is specifically, implementing the algorithm is done, you can, you can definitely do it from scratch, and I encourage you if you want to learn, uh, but um, there's a lot of libraries that already uh, have good algorithms that are out there, and people that are really smart <laughs> wrote them. So you can pick up one off the shelf, and the one that fits your problem, or you can extend it to fit your problem. Um, in this demo that I'm about to do after this slide, I already gathered the data and picked the algorithm, so that part is skipped. <laughs> uh, but I just want everyone to be aware that there's also things before this that you have to do uh, before the coding part that you kind of have to figure out. All right, cool. So this is the process, and now we're going to code. Hopefully this goes well. We'll see. I don't know yet. All right. All right, all right, all right. Cool. Can everyone see this? Probably not because I can't even see it. All right. <laughs> How about now? Better. Better? Yep. Yeah, you know, okay, good. So this is a thing called uh, Jupyter Labs. Um, machine learning people like to use it. It's an ID in a browser. You can use it. In, you can do this in Vim. Doesn't really matter. Um, I am. Um, I picked it up because it has uh, certain features that I like. Um, there's also a thing called Jupyter, which is a similar thing to this. Uh, doesn't really matter. But what we have here is uh, our CSV. It's a very very simple CSV, um, and it has a column called years of experience. Um, that's why this ID is nifty because you can even see CSVs in the browser. Um, it has years of experience, right, which is our X1, if you remember the plot, the graph, and then it has salary, which is um, which is what we're trying to predict, right? All right, now we looked at the data, we know we're trying to predict, it's time to code. I also cheated, I have uh, done examples, so if my brain stops working, I can just copy and paste it, but I, I promise I, <laughs> I'll explain everything. So I already um, imported some stuff and plotted some stuff, which because I don't want to remember that part, but I'm gonna explain the li libraries. So matplotlib is used for graphs and for plotting graphs. There are fancier uh, libraries nowadays, uh, but I just use this one because it's simple. Uh, there's pandas, which enables you to kind of have spreadsheets in code, which is kind of cool if you think about it. You can do a lot of uh, cool CSV manipulation with pandas or Excel or whatever. Um, then this is, there's this thing called, um, well, there's the main library called scikit-learn, uh, which has a lot of cool machine learning models already pre-built. Pre and I noticed I say models and algorithms. I mean the same thing. Um, and then, uh, so there's a there's a thing called train test split right here, uh, which I'll explain what it does later uh, when we code, but it's, it splits the data in a certain way. And this is the start of the show, linear regression, um, which is the actual algorithm. Uh, and then we have uh, this part, which when we get to it, I'll, uh, I'll explain it. All right, here we go, here he goes. All right, um, first thing we have to do is we have to import the data set and the way we do that is, is with this. So what's cool about this is you can do, you can do this and the Python console pops up, kind of neat, and you can type in, I don't know, you can type in, um, one plus one. Uh, it's two. Yay, works. Great. All right, cool. Um, so this is, I like to do it sequentially so you can 
I imported it here so you can kind of like play around with variables. Oh, well, it doesn't because it has an extension which you have to type in in order for it to work. There we go. All right. So that's imported. Now, uh, yes. Yeah, it's nice. Um, so now, let's look back at the CSV. So we're trying to predict uh, salary and we have experience. Um, so um, we're gonna, we have to split up that data. We have to have uh, a thing we're trying to predict in one bucket and the thing that helps us predict it in another bucket. And we're gonna call the bucket, the first bucket we're gonna call X and that's gonna be a thing that um, that helps us predict uh, salary and we have to, um, which means that we have to split this uh, data set thing into two parts. The first part is going to be this and I'm gonna explain what it is in a jiffy here. Um, so what this does, let's run it and see if it works. Yay, oh, whoops, yay. <laughs> um, cool, so what this does is it takes um, this thing and it says give me everything except the last column. Um, now the reason why I did this is because you usually have more than one column in a more complicated version of linear regression. Uh, but um, it basically says give me everything except the last column which is salary, so everything on the left of salary. And now the next thing that we have to do is we have to get the thing that we're trying to predict and the way we do that is this, not A, that's for sure. Okay, boop, we do this, and we just picked up the um, the other one. Oh, by the way, this uh, column, semicolon thing here, says give me all the rows, and this determines the column that you need. Um, all right, so we have that, and now uh, we have the, we're gonna have to use train test split, which basically, so when you're doing a machine learning project, it, for example, and when you, and when you're doing a classic software engineering project, and okay, I'm gonna go back back up a little bit. So software engineering projects, you have tests. You write tests to test your code. In machine learning projects, you have data that you train your model with, where it learns, where it figures out that line, and then you have data to see that's completely new to the algorithm, where you have to test and see if the algorithm is working as it should, if it found the best line or if it's just like weird. Um, cool. So that's what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do, and because I'm lacking time here, I'm gonna cheat. Don't tell anyone, uh, please. <laughs> so uh, we have um, X train, X test, which again, based on this, um, we have the bucket and now we separated the bucket. Uh, with, we split that one big bucket of things that help us uh, achieve our goal, which is the salary, into two things, X train and X test, and then Y train and Y test which are th doing the same thing only with the, the only with salary and we we kind of uh, oops we give it uh, x and y uh, because it needs to split something uh, and then we give it random state which basically um, there's some randomness in an algorithm and when I run this a few times it always shows a slightly different line and I wanted to show you the same line cool now uh, we are going to do this which is we're going to instantiate our algorithm and we're going to learn. All right, cool. So what this does is, if you remember that picture, figure line the best line, that's what this does. Um, and uh, if you ever do this algorithm from scratch, you'll be very lucky, very uh, grateful for somebody that built this so you don't have to do all the math for. Um, so let's run these three lines. Yay, okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we learned, so we figure out the line. We have to test it and see if it works. Um, and the way you do that is with this. The way you do that is with um, this. And let's test it out. And now what we can do is we can compare. We have Y pred and Y test. So Y test is real salaries from our database that we haven't shown to an algorithm yet. And Y pred is the um, predicted salaries that we think that they predicted. And they both use this X test as a mean, as a, as a way to predict the salary. So we can compare them manually, but what's more fun is to plot it on a graph and figure it out. But for just sake of completion, we can do Y pred and then Y 
test. And if you compare these two, you can see it's sometimes really off, like 37, 41, then sometimes pretty close, like 122. But what's really cool is we're gonna plot um, we're gonna plot this on a graph. All right. So uh, this is training data, and then this blue line is uh, the line we figured out, uh, kind of how you saw before. Um, and it was, I would say, it was pretty good. There's also a thing. Um, well, let's. We don't have any more time, unfortunately. But um, that's um, that's how it looks. And now, theoretically, if you want to predict someone's salary, not theoretically, but it's already done. You just plug in the numbers. You can deploy this to Google Cloud, Amazon, or whatever. You can deploy it on your own server, um, and you can um, predict someone's salary. That will be it, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I I know there's no. Oh oh yeah, there's more. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, it's usually, um, I usually like to kind of give puns throughout the talk and stuff, but because there's a lot, I decided to do at the end. I do this th fun thing called uh, dog training. I love dog training, pretty weird, I know. Uh, but um, I train working dogs, <laughs> and this is me being in a helper suit um, and training. There's another picture I didn't show where dogs go, dog goes after me and stuff, but um, I enjoy um, training dogs. This is me on the internet. I probably should do this. Uh, this is me on the internet. You can find me at GitHub, Twitter, my own website, which I'm redoing right now. And I work at, for wonderful folks at SafeChain. Um, we um, try to uh, prevent bad guys from stealing money when you're buying a house and other things. And there's a Q&A section, which we're not going to do, but you can ask me questions on Twitter, internet, here, email, however you want. All right, that's it, for real.